When you got a sunny day in Saskatchewan, there's nothing better than the great outdoors. I'm a blind person that likes to get out. I don't get stopped very easily. I do what I can to work way around the blindness. I can participate just like anyone else. Whether it's fishing, canoeing, cross-country skiing, backpacking, all year round, I love it all. My name is Ron Walsh. Welcome to Blind Adventures. Get ready. We're here at the Practice Pond in Saskatoon. Great, Ready, looks Monique? like a great day. Yeah. Okay, what a beautiful morning. My name is Monique Lalonde, and I am originally from Saskatoon. I have um, partial sight, so I can see easily maybe three to five feet in front of me. It's been a long time since I've gone fishing, so um, Ron and, and his guide, Doug, have been here teaching me how to cast. Okay, Monique, have you ever used one like these before? It's been a long time. Okay. Now, you know how the button works on the top? You push the button, All and right. you bring it back, and you throw it forward, and just about at the end, you let the button go. All righty. Okay, you're gonna Let's... give her a shot, and then cast with whatever hand you want, and then reel in with your right hand. Okay. Okay. Oh. Getting warmed up. I think you're doing pretty good, Minnie. There you go. That's better. That's perfect. That is what you want to be doing. A few practice casts later, and Monique was ready to put her skills to the test. We are going to go from here with the practicing. We're going to go to Gabriel's Crossing, the South Saskatchewan River. We're going to throw the boats in there, and we're going to queue up to Batage. And on the way, we're going to do some fishing. Here we are, Ron. We are almost there. We're getting very close to the waterfront, and the day looks spectacular. As we pulled up to the river, we met with two friends of mine to join us on the adventure, Ashlyn George and John McLean. My name's John. Uh, I volunteer with the Saskatoon Canoe Club. Ron asked me to come along and uh, kind of organize some boats and, and safety equipment for the paddling trip, so that's mostly why I'm here and uh, and if anything goes south on the on the river then I'll lead the response to that and step in. I'm Ashlyn George and I'm an outdoor adventure travel writer. Monique is wonderful. Um, I think we're gonna have a great day on the water. We have lots in common so we've been chatting a lot and she's so fearless. She's ready to go, ready to get on the water and I can't wait to paddle with her. You want an elbow run or are you sure. good? Sure. That'd be great John. There okay, we go. Okay we're off. How are you Monique? Wow. How's the river look? It's excellent. Nice, nice. Nice and still here. We got, just saw a couple of fish jumping over by that rock. Off to our right. Yeah. Nice green grass. Lots of birds. Birds are singing. Oh, it just smells like the country. Yeah, let's go get the boat, Doug. Yeah, you can just right. wait here, Ashlyn. Yeah. I'll help you with your life chart. Thank you. Yeah. Right there. And then we just got the boats loaded up on the shore right. here, And we'll haul them down and then get down and get ready to go. Wow. Yeah, here we are at Gabriel's Crossing. Yeah. There was a ferry here at one time. Gabriel Dumont ran it. Yeah, Kinda he ran cool. it for a few years. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Replaced by a bridge. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After John and Doug untied the canoe from the truck, I decided to step in and help Doug carry the canoe to the river. Okay, passenger side. Yeah. You got the boat. Okay, it's untied. Oh. Just a second here. Yeah, shuffle off to your right. Another step. There you go. Got her. Got her? Got her. Right on. All right, let's get her going. Are you good? I'm good. All right, we are going to flip it right now to our right. Okay. Okay? Okay, got her. Watch it. Right on. There we go. Okay. We're ready. Okay, we're going straight forward and there's going to be a bank. It's fairly steep, okay. and there's a rock at the bottom. I think we can just slide it in. <laughs> That's I'm steep. at the water. You're just coming up on the bank right now. Okay. Okay. Got her. You got her? Yep. You can just set it down. Okay. We can just slide it in. There we there go. There we go. One more step. Yeah. Got her. Are you in, Ron? I'm in. I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to get in right now. Okay. All right. Nice. And. All right, we're in, start. Doug. We're in the water. We are in. Nice. All right, we'll see you guys in a minute. <laughs> With me in the front of the canoe and Doug in the back, we paddled out from shore 
as we waited for the others to get ready. There, now if you want to reach down reach and feel down? the boat just right in there. front of you. All right. Can you step in from there with your right foot or um, maybe take a little step closer? There you go. Oh, yes. You're in there. Just wait. I got the boat. You got it. All right. I didn't step in properly. No, you're not. No, bad. you're good. Just back up a little bit. There you are. There you go. Are. How does you're that in? feel? We're in. If you reach and behind with your left hand, the, your paddle's right there. Okay. Got your dry bag right behind you. Working. Good. And then your jacket's tucked just to your right Perfect. as well. Perfect. And I've got your walking stick right here, too. All right. We'll just throw that yep. in front of the boat. Okay. We're just going to slide back with yep. you. Floating. Just on a little rock. There, there we go. go. Wow, the water is sure calm today. It is. With Monique in the front of the canoe she was sharing with Ashlyn, they were quick to meet up with us along with John. He was in his own canoe. And the adventure begins. <laughs> yeah, well, just wait five minutes. It's kind of like we're following the I think that's what we're doing. Hey, which way are the clouds going? They're chasing us. They're chasing us, and we got rain on three sides. We're chasing them, whichever one. This one on the right, is that one going to get us? I don't know. Guess we'll have to see. And sure enough, the rain caught up with us. Well, maybe I will. Yeah, just in case. Are you guys grabbing jackets? I think it's about to become a jacket grabbing. Blind Adventures with Ron Walsh. We'll be right back. Blind Adventures with Ron Walsh. <laughs> Everyone's a comedian. I got my hook in the water. Thought I caught a fish, and little did I know, John was tugging on my fishing line. Oh, there's one. Oh, he's got a fish. No, he's got a John. Oh. <laughs> Do I got you? Oh! <laughs> that, was that was a whopper. <laughs> that was not a good sound. No, that was not a good sound at all. Uh oh. Did anybody see any lightning there, or what? I, did, I thought I saw a flash. Oh. Yeah, I think so. And then the thunder. Yeah. Like, it's it's even over there. Ah, I heard some bowling up there. <laughs> some bowling. I think it's some bowling. I love someone's coming around the I don't know. A little bit of uh little bit of thunder and lightning and <laughs> so what direction is that? It's going northwest? Not exactly. Whoa, there that was a... Uh... A boomer? Keep count. Six, oh. seven, eight, a mile or two away. Yeah, that's not a good sign. I counted about 10 or 12, but I wonder. Take five. That's a good fishing spot. You guys want to pull over? Yeah, really, and Ron. So a thunderstorm came in pretty quick, actually. One second it was blue skies, and then all of a sudden we're getting rained on. The wind picked up with the thunder and the lightning, and but as quickly as it blew in, it blew right out. We're gonna do some fishing. We gotta get our lunch. I have no problem tying a hook by myself. I can just take the line and put the hook right on my tongue, and I can actually feel where the center of that hook is. And I can tie it, it just takes me a second. Slides through. There we go. Got her. There we go. Got her. All right, one cup tied by a blind guy. Am I going to catch a big one now? Oh, look out. <laughs> okay, Monique, I just put a worm on your hook. Give her a cast and see how it goes. See how well I do. How'd it go? Well, I'm reeling it in, and so we'll see what happens. I'm reeling real slow. You want it kind of bouncing off the bottom if you can. Feel that bottom. No hook in my hat, so I think you got it. Well, she did need a little bit of uh, help, but not too much. She has a little bit of experience in the past, like years ago she's done some fishing. But uh, a couple little pointers, and she did great. She uh, has no problem casting or reeling it in or... I don't know how she is at catching the big fish, but uh, a little more fishing, maybe we'll find out. 
We're gonna try a different fishing method here because it's pretty windy and there's a pretty heavy current out there. So it's kind of hard to jig fish. So we're gonna to switch to the pickerel rig where we could just cast it out there and let it sit on the bottom with a uh, couple of baits and various lengths up the, up the line. So when we just cast it out there, then um, the idea is that a fish will swim in and grab the bait and we'll reel it in. Well, I'm talking with fish hooks in my mouth <laughs> and I'm uh, getting a pickerel rig ready as well. Like Doug was saying, there's quite a bit of current here and it's tough to get the feel the jig on the bottom, so we'll throw some of these down with some great big weights. We got some triangular weights here for the river. And that the triangle, it doesn't roll. It kind of stops a little bit, so I'll give that a try. Monique decided to give the pickerel rig a try as well. Are you ready? As ready as I am ever gonna be. Okay, ready, one. Ready, one. Two. Two. Oh no, Ron's in the way. We're gonna hit him in the head. That's perfect. Right there. Now just reel it until the line feels tight. Now let's stick it in the rod holder. Yeah. And I guess you can kind of feel the line with your hand. Yeah. You can't, and it feels tight, right? Yeah. 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 We should have been doing this all along. And then we will hook the oh, bell no. on. The bell is designed to be clipped at the end of the rod. If it rings, there's likely to be a fish at the end of the line. There you go. So if you hear the bell ringing, then we reel, reel it in. OK. After fishing for a while with no luck, we were glad we came prepared, with fish from home to cook up instead. With a little bit of seasoning, it smelled just as good cooking in the pan. Oh, that's just like, um, it's like I'm at home. <laughs> it's like this is my big yard. Oh, we had a great lunch, got the stove out, cooked some fish, had a Caesar salad, had some brown beans. Pretty well got out brown beans when you're out fishing on the river. Oh, it was great. We got a little ways more to go. We're gonna stop at Batosh and maybe go take a look at the historical site. And uh, yeah, it's kind of neat to kind of stand there where, you know, Métis in the past would have been fishing there and canoeing. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a huge historical place in Saskatchewan, the Batosh. It is, it is kind of an amazing spot. We're pushing offshore to the Batosh historical site. And I understand the river and surrounding valley are still as beautifully scenic as I remember them to be. Here we are, we're coming to the end. So we're at Batosh now. Yeah. Hello, bonjour. Hello. 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 Welcome, welcome to Batosh. My name is Adam Matheson. I'm the interpretation coordinator here at Batosh National Historic Site. Batosh is an historic site that commemorates several things. Uh, it commemorates the Battle of 1885 um, and the 1885 resistance. Uh, we commemorate the system of river lots that we have here at Batosh. Um, it's a demonstration of how the Métis organize themselves on the land. And uh, lastly but not least, we also commemorate the Métis community that lived here um, and still lives around here. And so that's what Batosh is commemorated for. Whereabouts was the uh, only Saskatchewan River battle? Yeah, well, you're you're standing at the place. Okay, well, yeah. the cable was here, like the ferry was yes. right here. Yes. So this is the crossing of the river where the Carlton Trail crosses the South Saskatchewan. Okay. And when the Métis heard that the Northcott was coming, they all rushed down to the river. They started shooting at it, and they came up with a plan to try to trap it. Right. So there's a ferry cable that went across the river. Right as it was going underneath, they lowered it. They didn't get the whole boat, but they got the smokestack and it cut off. Wow. Yeah, and that disabled the boat. Can you take us on a tour? Absolutely. I'll take care of the boats, you guys, and uh, you can go on the tour and we'll catch up later, okay? Sounds good to me. Well, thanks a lot. Now, the inhabitants here were Jean and Margaret Caron, who came uh, in 1872. My name is Jacelyn Pere, and I am a Métis woman and interpreter here at Batoche National Historic Site. As the Canadian military were advancing towards the East Village, they had orders to burn down whatever was in their path. And unfortunately, the Karen home happened to be in their path. The Karen family was away at church that morning, and they came home to nothing but bits of stove and cellar remains. Is this church still around? It is, yeah. Go yep. check it out? Absolutely. Cool. It's off this direction, is it? It's actually to your other side. Other way. <laughs> <laughs> we continue our tour to the church and rectory further on down the road. 
and we met up with Adam sitting by a nearby picnic table. We're at the church. Is there bullet holes in the church that a person could check out? Not in the church anymore. Okay. Uh, but we are actually in front of the rectory. This okay. is where the priest lived. Right. And there are some bullet holes. Okay. So there was a Gatling gun that was brought by General Middleton's soldiers. Um, and it wasn't very accurate. Right, right, <laughs> so were right, they right, shooting right, at people right. in the rectory? Was yeah. people like... What they would do is they would, um, they would fire the Gatling gun, fire a burst at any house they came across. Um, they would let the people inside leave and then they would burn down the house, just like the Karen family. The priest was here at the time, so he waved a white flag of surrender and the priest was able to negotiate for the church and the rectory so that they wouldn't be destroyed during the battle. Um, the Métis dug many rifle pits along the banks of the river uh, because they were worried about General Middleton coming along the river. So just enough space for them to lie down and peek over the ridge. Uh, the rifle pits, is there any close to here that we could go check out? Yeah, absolutely. There's one that we've kept in good shape, uh, one Métis rifle pit that we can definitely go have a look at. Cool. Let's go check it out. Blind Adventures with Ron Walsh. We'll be right back. Blind Adventures with Ron Walsh. We are almost in the pit. Yeah, oh, now yeah. we're in the pit. So you'd be laying down in here. Well, you don't even. Well, you could kneel down in here. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, almost stand up. And which way? It has eroded it over time, so yeah. it's like it would have been probably deeper. Yeah. Like this is real cover in bushes and stuff. Like it would yeah. be really hard to see them to begin with. Huh? Yeah. Especially if you're not moving. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if they were coming in, you'd get a good shot at them. Yeah. So, so this is actually one of the original Métis rifle pits, and how actually how big is it? Like how, how big um, is it? It's maybe six feet wide and maybe twelve feet long. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and then the trees have kind of grown in and around it, so it's almost like you're in an arch right now. Okay. With the trees hanging over top of your head. So, the so they would have been looking at what straight out in front of here? Uh, the field, the next row of trees. Straight south, if you. Okay, and this is all right. open field here. Yeah. On the final day of the battle, on May, uh, May 12th, General Middleton by that time was fed up. And so they all got, went to Mission Ridge and charged towards the East Village. Um, and many of the Métis stayed and tried to hold them off. One of them was Joseph Ouellet. Um, he was an elder. Uh, he was 93 years old. Wow. So he stayed in his rifle pit and gave the rest of his fellow soldiers time to escape. Um, he ended up dying of a bayonet wound in his rifle pit. Um, but he is buried in the cemetery as well. Um, and he's buried separately from the rest as um, kind of a, um, a way to honor his, his memory. Uh, also because he was an elder, right? So. Mm -hmm. He was 93. Yeah, yeah. wow. To, to lay here in the cold and rain. And, yeah. 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 Fight wow. 93. My God. But yeah. the sacrifice, you know, he's saying, you go, I'll stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He knew he was maybe at the end of his life. Yeah. And, wanted to give someone else a chance. You're certainly welcome to stick okay. around and explore and um, yeah, find all the little secrets that, you know, Batash has in store. There's lots of beautiful views and, and stuff that we haven't seen today. So definitely check that out. Thank you. This has been great. You're welcome. Wow, that was neat. That was neat. <laughs> Very neat. For, uh, quick, let's get out of here before they start shooting at us. <laughs> <laughs> to wrap up the day, we decided to take in the scenery from a small lookout tower overlooking the river. We are now at the top of the lookout, and over on your right is the East Village. Um, right in front of you is the river. It's a pretty river beautiful view. Really nice right I now. bet it'd be nice. Yeah. Right behind you is uh, Settler's Land, where you can see the trees oh, wow. uh, in the mm -hmm. corners. Oh, that uh, it runs for two miles. And then yeah. over to your left right now, it's where the church and everything would be. Yeah, where you're pointed now. What do you think? What did you like? For me, I think I was just hanging out, getting to know you guys. It's when you're sitting on the water paddling and you get a chat, those are some of the best moments. Cool. Yeah. What do you think, Monique? How was your, how was your trip? I don't know. I, I liked the whole thing. I liked the fishing. I liked being with people. And I liked the whole canoeing down the river and all the different weather that we had and all <laughs> these different things because that's what all makes it interesting. 
Oh, success. This has been fantastic. We able to get Monique out and do some fishing. She hasn't done any long time. Uh, Ashlyn, you got her to slow down a little bit to come along with us. She's a busy gal. It was fun. It was fun. I'm getting ready for another one. It's going to be dark in a while, and the trip's going to end. What do we do next? What's the next adventure? <laughs> Woohoo! Something cool. It's going to be fun. With you, I don't doubt it. <laughs> Host Ron Walsh. Producers Anthony J. Chastego, Philip Dirksen, field producer Damian Kent, director Damian Kent, writer Jeff Martell, production manager and coordinator Jason Gaughan, supervising editor Anthony J. Chastego, director of photography, drone operator Shannon Scott, camera operators Dustin Taylor, Damian Kent, production assistants, locations, Doug Hooper, John McLean, Jeff Martell, location audio Jason Delsoy, Reed Parashenik, picture editors Dustin Taylor, Shannon Scott, motion graphics, Shannon Scott, audio post-production, Glenn Enns, audio art, craft services, Catherine Breyer, Tavia Breyer, hair for Ron Walsh, Elaine Strymer. Special thanks Parks Canada, the Tosh National Historic Site, integrated described video specialist, Simone Cupid, content development specialist, Jim Crisco, coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson, director of production, Karen Nye, director of programming, Brian Perdue, VP content development and programming, John Melville, president and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, AMI, Accessible Media, Inc.